Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Painkiller, the Black Edition. This is Zalgaris 115. Okay, uh, if my memory serves me well, and it sometimes does, I promised you in the previous part that I'll explain how the gold cards work. So, uh, yeah, let me show you. Here is the Black Tarot menu, and you see two tables. Uh, the upper one serves as a place to store your silver cards, while the lower one serves as a storage for your golden cards. If you remember right, in the previous cemetery level, we unlocked one card and that was Endurance. Here, down in the golden cards, you can right-click to view the picture, but it's not that much to look at. Anyway, every card has a cost to place. Yeah, 100. You see, we have 388 gold coins collected. So what I'm gonna do is put this card from the storage into our user slot. There, we just lost 100 gold. Don't worry, it's one holy item. Anyway, we can now in the game we can activate the golden card powers one time per level. Uh, later we can activate them two or three times, but uh, at the very beginning just once per level. Okay, so we have it equipped. Of course, we can put it back and get half the cost, uh, half the cost back. So it costs 100. We put it back. We get 50. But let's not do that because we just lose much gold. Anyway, these two slots serve as silver card. Uh, they have uh, passive bonuses. You just have them put in place and the bonuses apply automatically while the three golden cards effects uh, you can combine them in any devious way you want and uh, when you activate them for a short time they'll grant you an incredible bonus this one uh, with it will take only half of the damage damage I'm gonna show you what happens when you activate golden cards not out of need but for for a simple pleasure to let you know and it's not that much of a useful effect, but after all, it's the very first golden card, so don't worry. There are far more better cards waiting for us. But to unlock the second card in the next level, Atrium Complex, we need to destroy all the objects. Now, that's a bit different from just completing the level, huh? This card can be missed. All the others will require us to uh, complete some objectives. Kill all monsters, find at least 500 gold. Kill Necrogiant in less than two minutes. I wonder what Necrogiant is. We'll later about that. And without further ado, let's start the second level of the first chapter. One of my very favorites. It has a beautiful atmosphere. Oh, here we are, some sort of dark, damp cellar, and there's a chest right in front of us. Let's open it. Not really opening, but whatever. Ooh, it's dark and gritty. I really like this level. And the amb ambience music is awesome. Oh, and the battle music as well. <laughs> First enemy, evil monk. Yeah, they're called evil monks. Oh. They're pretty green, actually. Now, you see, we hit the corpse just like that, and it dropped three gems. Now, you see the gold found statistic. There's a number in gray. It means we collected 75 gold coins as a bonus. This bonus is only received when you deal damage to an already dead enemy before his body disappears. It's best done with painkiller, uh, but you can usually do this with explosive overkills when there are many explosive objects around and they create a chain of explosion that cause damage to already dead enemies. Don't worry, we'll be seeing those situations a lot. Now, Every gem yielded this way grants us 25 gold coins, so yeah, 
three of those, we have 75 gold. Yeah, it's an extra number, not the red one, part of the overall gold that is in this level, but the bonus one. You can do this infinitely, that's why. But you should never have much problems with gold. Yeah. Okay. That's one way of opening the door. Oh! Quite a load of those guys. Let's pick them off. Yeah. This is why we love painkiller. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. Okay, now let's check the other side. There's bound to be something of value in there. Okay. Ah, the first secret area discovered. Some torture room or something, doesn't matter. They're long dead anyway. We have a small chest with a few gold coins, but this one takes quite a lot of hits to destroy, so... Let's apply the same technique we used on the big guy in the previous level, and that's hit the right mouse button as quickly as possible. There, opened. Now, this is an exciting moment that I'm gonna save here, because we just picked up my very favorite weapon, the stake gun, also a grenade launcher. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate when we next meet enemies, but this gun shoots wooden stakes with such a pressure, it shreds enemies to pieces, and the longer it's in the air, the more velocity it builds up, and, it, and, and the stakes can even set themselves on fire, it's that powerful. And you can pin enemies on solid ground. Or columns. Oh, 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 what was that? Not nice. Yeah. This is basically why I love stake gun. You see? And now you can easily hit them for additional gold. It's awesome, really. Time for some staking fun. Yeah, on those statues. Now, how can you not love this weapon? Seriously. Ooh. And there was an armor. A bit hidden, but it doesn't count as a secret. These pictures are really fascinating. Uh, pictures, paintings. <laughs> Okay, down we go. This place is beautiful, absolutely. My favorite. Oh, and deadly. Ooh! Nice! It worked out just fine. <laughs> Pin them like that. Now, the grenade launcher. What do you expect from a grenade? Really? Boom. And you see, this is the explosion chain I was talking about, and the dead enemy's body yielded a gem. So, another 25 gold coins for us. Yeah, just like that. Okay, that was fairly easy. Didn't get hit. Now then. Oh, another thing. Uh, in the controls menu, you can assign special hotkeys, uh, which weapon you want to select at which number, and also uh, the functions of control and shift keys. Now, I'm of course using left control and left shift keys, uh, and I bound them to specific weapon functions. Okay, what does this mean? You see, I have a shotgun equipped, but when I press control button, I shoot a painkiller. Just like that, instantly, without having to switch the weapon, I just shoot from painkiller. It's very useful when destroying objects, when when wielding shotgun, and I just don't have the enough range to hit someone, I just press control button, 
and I shoot from the painkiller instantly. Also, my uh, left shift key is assigned to the grenade launcher function from the stay gun. See? So, when I'm wielding a shotgun, I just press the left shift key and lob a grenade over there. Well, that was a bad aiming, but you know what I mean. Over there, maybe. Yeah, that, that was better. I wasted almost all my grenades. Ah, whatever. So, it's incredibly useful to use the left control and left shift key. At least, I think these are the default bindings. I'm not really sure. Okay, now. Keep watch on those ob... Oh, we just missed a coin, that's sad. Keep watch on those objects since we need to destroy all of them to unlock the next car. Oh boy, not 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 good, not good. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Okay. Ah! What treachery is this? Ooh. Yeah, you can use those barrels to kill enemies. So these guys are evil monks, but. They usually carry an axe, or they can even do a wield uh, two axes at the same time. They can either throw them at you, or just come in real close and smash you. Um, more like hack and slash you. Uh, also, their life is bound to the weapon, so if they lose the weapon, they die. So basically. Those that throw their eggs are suicidal, they'll throw it at you and die instantly. Whether they hit or no, you see? He threw an X, he even missed but died. Oops. Not good. I think I'm gonna die. Yeah, I'm too busy explaining to pay any real attention. Oh my god. Okay, this is a bad situation. Well, so much for evil monks, but as you may have noticed, this. Ugly bastard here. Ah, more jewels. Okay, I'm not gonna call them ugly bastards because they have an official name I picked up from the game manual. They're called Psycho Nuns. Nun, like N U N. Psycho Nun. They're psychotic and they're nuns for some reason. Ah! And, well, that's what the Psycho Nuns do. They kill you a lot. Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> okay, the second attempt. Let's not get used to getting chances like these, okay? Uh, yeah, dying in the first chapter is, is kind of a shame. And embarrassing, but well, I'm not here to show off. I'm um, I'm here to show, not to show off. Yeah, that, that's it. Ha! Beautiful, ain't it? Ah, the second secret area actually with another holy item. More gold for us. Okay, I was talking about the Psychonauts, uh, well, there are actually two varieties, this is of course the weaker one, and they still kill us, <laughs> oh well. They all look the same, especially the stronger variety wears a helmet, which means you won't kill them with one shotgun hit, no no no, they survive it, their helmet drops, and then they'll be able to cast some some wicked magic at you that will prevent you from using any weapons some pacifistic field or something I don't know but later about that we're gonna see them in the uh, in the fourth level in the cathedral level let's just enjoy them while they're weak oh no, I wasn't using stay gun very much that, that's a shame. Oh, come on. Ah! You don't want to just surprise me like that. Yeah, 
That's it. Hope it hurts. And there's the goal. Anyway. Uh, okay. We cleared this area pretty much. No, no. There's another Psycho Nun. Gosh, they never give up, do they? Oh. Patches of that happening. Check the upper floor of the courtyard. Yes, and close doors. Now, a bit of information about these doors. Uh, you recognize them by those Nordic runes all over them, the grey design, and the fact that your painkiller returns back automatically. It's not a solid object. You know what that means? It's not gonna stay there forever. Yeah, it's movable. These walls always disappear when the uh, the light where you can finish the level appears. Then these doors open all the time. Doors or objects, they can be doors, walls, halls, covers of sorts. They always disappear when you can enter the level exit. Now keep that in mind if you want to discover all secrets. And this will be the case in this level. In order to discover all the secrets, which in which lie more objects which we need to destroy in order to unlock the card we'll need to wait for these barriers to disappear so let's just continue until we reach the exit but then we'll turn back <sighs> this was a poor trap really okay now yeah I see an armor here let's pick it up I think there's still more stuff in the courtyard yeah these barrels here. Enjoy, let's enjoy explosion. Yeah. When you destroy explosives with an explosive, there isn't an explosion chain. They just all blow up instantaneously. Uh, let Let me explain. <laughs> when there is a heap of explosive on place and you destroy one of those, well, let's say barrels, explosive barrels, for example, it will take a few seconds until it explodes and then until the rest of them explode one by one but if you destroy all of them by an explosive well they all explode at the same time so if you want to delay the explosion to have a longer effect shoot them or hit them with painkiller just don't stand too close and if you want them to blow up instantaneously and have the explosive to spare throw a grenade Ah, oh god, that must have sounded confusing. That's an interesting flaw there. But okay. This will be the toughest fight, fight so... This is the place where I'm gonna use a golden card. Okay, the explosives. I'll destroy one, and they all explode one by one, in a quick succession. But... When... If you use an explosive, ah, it's not a good place to show you. That doesn't matter. When you use an explosive, they all explode instantaneously. You may have noticed a new kind of enemy, and they're not evil monks, they're called devil monks. I'm not sure where's the huge difference. They're just devilish, not necessarily evil, I guess. And they carry those nasty glowing stops with green glow. Once again, there are two varieties of this enemy. They either carry a stuff with a green glow or stuff... Ah! No, 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 that wasn't good. Time to heal. Well, anyway, they either, either carry a stuff that glows green or a stuff that grows red. The difference is that the green stuff poison, uh, the green stuff slows us down, like this. <coughs> Not my intention, but there you go. And makes you an easy prey for all the other enemies. While the red stuffs, but uh, staves, yeah, that's the right grammar. Staves, uh, they poison you, dealing you di direct damage over time. 
green ones just slow you down, but that can be even more fatal than a direct poison if you're surrounded by enemies. Also, when you kill those devil monks, they drop the staff and the staff effect can still apply to you. Even after death, their weapons are dangerous. However, if you give their body to pieces, their staff loses its magic. It's just an empty shell in that case. If you do an overkill. Oh, there we have more explosives to play with. Okay, fine with me. Okay, you remember. I destroyed this color of exploding barrels with one strike from painkiller, they exploded one by one. Now I'll apply a grenade. Huh, all instantaneously, because they all received damage damage at the same time. See? Only one barrel exploded and then another. And both of them at the same time. It's kind of hard to show and even explain, you You need to get the feel of it. Sort of an instinct takes over you and makes you exploit this uh, engine programming. Okay, beneath that barrel there's a checkpoint there. Statistics don't look like much, but okay, let's keep it moving. I didn't use the golden card, now I'm gonna make amends. Oh, he fell, you bastard. Okay. Now you see, I give him to pieces, or froze him, and he fell to pieces, and the staff loses his magic. Oh boy. I don't intend to die here. Well, if they die <coughs> the normal way, the staff still applies to you. And because of the magic in the staff, staffs, I just died. Okay, let me try this again. Hm. Not even the gold card helped. Okay, let's not keep at the sides because they just spawn right in you. Keep at the center and you should be, well, I want to say safe, but safer than at the edges of this room. Okay, here's the golden card again, just in case. Oh! Yeah. Slowing is seriously annoying. Oh, how did I miss? Uh oh! Now, I'm gonna give this guy there and the magic disappeared, but there was another. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, well, statue of a beautiful lady ruined, but there's a level exit. Now, remember what I said about those barriers? Now the level exit appeared, so we're gonna go back and new locations should be revealed for us. Of course there is a bug when this does not happen and yeah that can be truly secret hunt breaking. Yeah that door opened and this door where a barrel on fire rolled attempting to kill us is now open with two chests. That means more gold and more objects for us to destroy. Okay. That's not all, there's still a fourth secret remaining. There we go. Now enjoy this. Ah, okay. Beautiful, ain't it? And another three crates to go. Of course, when you're nearing the level exit, uh, feel free to waste ammunition because you're not gonna take it to the next level, you just spawn with the same amount of ammunition in the next level as you would even if you have saved all your ammo. So it doesn't matter really with what ammunition you end the level with. Now this doesn't count as secret but it's the very same principle. These three crates are access crates, chests are accessible only 
when the level exit appears. Oh, looky! We got all the golden stars. One for the objects as well, which means we destroyed all the objects. In turn, we can collect our black tarot card. Oh, there it is. Step into the light. Hooray! Didn't take that long. Okay, let's see what the card is all about. Now, new black tarot card. Haste. The world moves two times slower. Cost the place 100. Now, let me explain how world moves two times slower. The Havoc engine is... well... Yeah. Okay, uh, it's not really a haste to speak of. Uh, as the description says, the world around you moves two times slower, you, however, move your traditional speed. So, it means you're two times faster than the rest, just from your perspective, the world is slower. Now, that's a metaphysics that's really worth considering, and fun to watch when the, go when the golden card effect is applied. But, we're gonna do that in the next third level. So I'll see you later, this is Zelgaris115 signing off.